Maryland announcing a new economic council aiming to bolster job creation in tech, AI, and cyber in the state. Joining us right now with more on his economic agenda, Maryland Governor Wes Moore is with us this morning. It's nice to see you, Wes. Uh, I should now Great say governor. You it's, it's, you know, you, you've been on the program for so long, <laughs> it's, it's hard for me. But, Governor, it's great to see you. Um, help us understand what, what you're doing. Uh, and most importantly, what's, what do you think you can do to actually attract these companies to the state? Yeah, well, it, of course, it's, it's great to see you. And, you know, when, when I first came into office, uh, I realized there is no reason for a state that is uh, as asset rich as the state of Maryland to be 47th in economic competitiveness. There was no reason for a state that is as asset rich as Maryland to be 43rd in, in, in unemployment. And when I talk about the assets, we have some of the best institutions of higher education in the country, to include my alma mater, Johns Hopkins University. You, it, is, it is the cyber home of, of the country. We're the home of U.S. Cyber Command. We're the home of Fort Meade and Andrews Air Force Base. We have the Port of Baltimore, the fastest growing regional uh, uh, international airport with BWI Marshall Airport. So there's no reason for our economy to feel so, to feel so stagnant. And, uh, and so we really said, how do we make our state to go from being asset rich and strategy poor to being asset rich and economically competitive? And so the real focus that we wanted to have is to say, how can we, you know, before I ran for office, I, I was a military officer. I led soldiers in combat. And I know there's a few things you have to understand. One is you've got to understand the terrain. The second, you've got to understand your capabilities. And the third is you've got to understand your opponent and your enemy's capabilities. Then you can devise a plan. And so this really is about helping Maryland to understand the natural assets that we have in cyber, our natural assets in life science, our natural assets in AI, and to say, how do we then go and invest, invest aggressively towards those things so we can create pathways for work, wages, and wealth for all of our citizens? Governor, though, what, what does that look like? And historically, uh, what that has looked like in other states is tax breaks, in tax incentives, um, other types of payments. And we have now moved to a time in, in parts of our country where, where those things, which were popular, are now no longer popular, especially among Democrats. Well, I, I think we have to be able to have an, an all of the above approach and be able to let, be led by data. You know, as a leader, I am data driven and heart led, where I, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I acknowledge that. But I also know this, I don't move without data. And we have to be able to examine what the data is saying, why our state is, so, is, is, is not being competitive with its neighbors and with our other national partners. So we have to be able to look at not just tax rates, but also look at the complexity of being able to start businesses. There's no reason why the permitting process in the state of Maryland is taking upwards of three years for certain industries. We have to be able to focus on this on, on measurements of both deregulation, deregulation and also finding ways of making it not so complicated. Uh, cutting the red tape for businesses to be able to grow and start and scale in the state of Maryland. And it also means we have to be able to think about the other things that CEOs are asking about when they're saying, tell us about your transportation assets. Tell us about your schools. Tell us about public safety. If we don't have better answers for those questions, we're not going to be able to compete with how fast some of our other neighbors are moving. So, so how do you approach this? I mean, do you go on a, a tour of Silicon Valley? Do you go try to pick off companies in Florida? Where, where, where do you see the opportunity and what do you think you have to offer? And how yes, long does this I, take? I mean, this is a long-term game. It, it is a long-term game, but, uh, but when I say that Maryland is, that this is going to be Maryland's decade, I mean that, and I know it means it starts now. Uh, and it does mean that we are going to both have, have a council that really is focusing on asset mapping our state and identifying what are the specific elements and areas that we want to invest in and that we want to be aggressive on. Uh, but it also does mean that we are going to be taking Maryland on an eight year roadshow uh, that, you know, I, I want the other governors to, uh, to to like me, but I'm very clear that when I go to their states, I'm going to bring three businesses back with me every single time. And so it does mean how are we thinking about the assets that, that we then have. But also, I tell you, Andrew, something else that's going to be important is we're also going to be going to these areas where you find companies that are being built in states that do not match their values, where you're watching this hyper-politicization taking place in states and in governors who seem to be more worried about getting in fights with their largest employers than actually serving the needs of their society. So it does mean that part of the, part of the instructions that I have for, this, for, this, for the council is to be able to identify those places and those spaces where you have businesses who say, you know what, we're not comfortable building a business in a state where we know that half of our employees are watching the reproductive rights being taken away. 
we're not comfortable being in a state where we're watching the curriculum for our, for our students consistently being tested and banned. Well, our response should be, then come to Maryland and we can make this not just a hospitable in, environment for it, but also we wanna make it easier for businesses to be able to grow and thrive, for our businesses to be able to uh, gain liquidity and for our state to be able to have an understanding of global macro uh, circumstances that allow us to put together a better balance.